Bonnie Lynn Raitt is an American blues singer, guitarist, songwriter, and activist. During the 1970s, Raitt released a series of Roots-influenced albums that incorporated elements of blues, rock, folk and country. She was also a frequent session player and collaborator with other artists, including Warren Zevon, Little Feet, Jackson Brown, The Pointer Sisters, John Prine, and Leon Russell. In 1989, after several years of critical acclaim but little commercial success, she had a major hit with the album Nick of Time. The following two albums, Look of the Draw and Longing in Their Hearts, were multi-million sellers, generating several hit singles. Including Something to Talk About, Love Sneakin' Up on You, and The Ballad I Can't Make You Love Me. Rate has received 10 competitive Grammy Awards as well as a Grammy Lifetime Achievement Award. She is listed as number 50 in Rolling Stone's list of the 100 greatest singers of all time and number 89 on the magazine's list of the 100 greatest guitarists of all time. Australian country music artist Graham Connors has said, Bonnie Raitt does something with a lyric no one else can do, she bends it and twists it right into your heart. Bonnie Lynn Raitt was born on November 8, 1949, in Burbank, California. Her mother, Marge Goddard, was a pianist, while her father, John Raitt, was an actor in musical productions such as Oklahoma and The Pajama Game. Raitt is of Scottish ancestry, her ancestors constructed Raitt Castle near Nairn. As a child, Rate would often play with her two brothers, Steve and David, and was a self-described tomboy. John Rate's job as a theater actor meant Bonnie did not interact with him as much as she would have liked. Rate grew to resent her mother, as she became the main authority figure of the household whenever John was away. Rate's musically inclined parents had a strong influence on her life. From a young age, she and her brothers were encouraged to pursue music. At first, Rate played the piano, but was intimidated by her mother's abilities. She instead began playing a Stella guitar, which she received as a Christmas gift in 1957 at the age of eight. Ray did not take lessons, and instead took influence from the American folk music revival of the 1950s. She was also influenced by the beatnik movement, stating, it represented my whole belief, I'd grow my hair real long so I looked like a beatnik. From ages 8 through 15, Ray and her brothers attended a summer camp in the Adirondack Mountains called Camp Regis. It was there where Rate learned of her musical talents, when camp counselors would ask her to play in front of the campers. Learning how to play songs from folk albums then became a hobby for Rate. As a teenager, Rate was self-conscious about her weight and her freckles, and saw music as an escape from reality. That was my saving grace. I just sat in my room and played my guitar said Rate. After graduating from Oakwood Friends School in Poughkeepsie, New York in 1967, Rate entered Radcliffe College of Harvard University, majoring in social relations and African studies. She said her plan was to travel to Tanzania, where President Julius Nyerere was creating a government based on democracy and socialism. She was the lead singer in a campus music group called the Revolutionary Music Collective founded by songwriter Bob Telson which played for striking Harvard students during the student strike of 1970. Rate became friends with blues promoter Dick Waterman. During her second year of college, Rate left school for a semester and moved to Philadelphia with Waterman and other local musicians. Rate said it was an opportunity that changed everything. In the summer of 1970, she played with her brother David on stand-up bass. With Mississippi Fred McDowell at the Philly Folk Festival as well as opening for John Hammond at the Gaslight Cafe in New York. She was seen by a reporter from Newsweek, who began to spread the word about her performance. Scouts from major record companies were soon attending her shows to watch her play. She eventually accepted an offer from Warner Brothers, who soon released her debut album, Bonnie Raitt, in 1971. The album was warmly received by the music press, with many writers praising her skills as an interpreter and as a bottleneck guitarist. At the time, few women in popular music had strong reputations as guitarists. While admired by those who saw her perform, and respected by her peers, Raitt gained little public acclaim for her work. Her critical stature continued to grow but record sales remained modest. Her second album, Give It Up, was released in 1972 to positive reviews. One journalist described the album as an excellent set and established the artist as an inventive and sympathetic interpreter. However, it did not change her commercial fortunes. 1973's Taken My Time was also met with critical acclaim, but these notices were not matched by the sales. Rate began to receive greater press coverage, including a 1975 cover story for Rolling Stone, but with 1974 Streetlights, reviews for her work were becoming increasingly mixed. 
by this point, Rate was already experimenting with different producers and different styles, and she began to adopt a more mainstream sound that continued through 1975's Home Plate. In 1976, Rate made an appearance on Warren Zevon's eponymous album. Rate performing at the Berkeley Community Theatre, 1976-1977-1977 Sweet Forgiveness album gave Rate her first commercial breakthrough, when it yielded a hit single in her remake of Runaway. Recast as a heavy rhythm and blues recording based on a rhythmic groove inspired by Al Green. Rate's version of Runaway was disparaged by many critics. However, the song's commercial success prompted a bidding war for Rate between Warner Brothers. And Columbia Records. There was this big Columbia-Warner war going on at the time, recalled Rate in a 1990 interview. James Taylor had just left Warner Brothers and made a big album for Columbia. And then, Warner signed Paul Simon away from Columbia, and they didn't want me to have a hit record for Columbia, no matter what. So, I renegotiated my contract. And they basically matched Columbia's offer. Frankly the deal was a really big deal. Warner Brothers held higher expectations for Rate's next album, The Glow, in 1979, but it was released to poor reviews as well as modest sales. Rate had one commercial success in 1979 when she helped organize the five musicians united for safe energy concerts at Madison Square Garden in New York City. The show spawned the three-record gold album No Nukes, as well as a Warner Brothers feature film of the same name. The shows featured co-founders Jackson Brown, Graham Nash, John Hall, and Rate as well as Bruce Springsteen, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, the Doobie Brothers, Carly Simon, James Taylor, Bill Scott Heron, and others. In 1980, she appeared as herself in the Paramount film Urban Cowboy where she sang Don't It Make You Wanna Dance. For her next record, 1982's Green Light, Rate made a conscious attempt to revisit the sound of her earlier records. However, to her surprise, many of her peers and the media compared her new sound to the burgeoning new wave movement. The album received her strongest reviews in years, but her sales did not improve and this had a severe impact on her relationship with Warner Brothers. Tongue and Groove and released from Warner Brothers in 1983, Rate was finishing work on her follow-up album, Tongue and Groove. The day after mastering was completed on Tongue and Groove, the record company dropped Rate from its roster, not being happy with her commercial performance up to that point. The album was shelved and not released, and Rate was left without a record contract. At this time Rate was also struggling with alcohol and drug abuse problems. Despite her personal and professional problems, Rate continued to tour and participate in political activism. In 1985, she sang and appeared in the video of Sun City, the anti-apartheid song written and produced by guitarist Stephen Van Zandt. Along with her participation in Farm Aid and Amnesty International concerts, Rate traveled to Moscow, Russia in 1987 to participate in the first joint Soviet-slash-American peace concert, later shown on the Showtime cable network. Also in 1987, Raid organized a benefit in Los Angeles for Countdown 87 to stop Contra Aid. The benefit featured herself, along with Don Henley, Herbie Hancock, and others. Two years after being dropped from Warner Brothers Records, the label notified Raid of their plans to release the Tongue and Groove album. I said it wasn't really fair, recalled Raid. I think at this point they felt kind of bad. I mean, I was out there touring on my savings to keep my name up, and my ability to draw was less and less. So they agreed to let me go in and recut half of it. And that's when it came out as Nine Lives. A critical and commercial disappointment, Nine Lives, released in 1986, was Rate's last new recording for Warner Brothers. In late 1987, Rate joined singers K. D. Lang and Jennifer Warnes as female background vocalists for Roy Orbison's television special, Roy Orbison and Friends, A Black and White Night. Following this highly acclaimed broadcast, Rate began working on new material. By then, she was clean and sober, having resolved her problems with substance abuse. She later credited Stevie Ray Vaughan for his help in a Minnesota State Fair concert the night after Vaughan's 1990 death. During this time, Rate considered signing with the Prince-owned Paisley Park Records, but they could not come to an agreement and negotiations fell through. Instead, she began recording a bluesy mix of pop and rock songs under the production guidance of Don was at Capitol Records. Rate had met was through Hal Wilner, who was putting together Stay Awake, a tribute album to Disney Music for A&M. Was and Wilner both wanted Rate to sing lead on an adult contemporary arrangement created by Was for Baby Mine, the lullaby from Dumbo. Rate was very pleased with the sessions, and she asked Was to produce her next album. 
rate at the 1990 Grammy Awards after working with was on the Stay Awake album, Rates Management, Gold Mountain, pushed numerous labels about a new record deal and found interest from Capitol Records. Rate was signed to Capitol by A and our executive Tim Devine. With her first Capitol Records release, and after nearly 20 years in the business, Rate achieved commercial success with Nick of Time, her 10th overall album of her career. Released in the spring of 1989, Nick of Time went to number one on the U.S. album chart following Rate's Grammy sweep in early 1990. This album has also been voted number 230 in the Rolling Stone list of 500 greatest albums of all time. Rate later stated that her 10th try was my first sober album. At the same time, Rate received a fourth Grammy Award for her duet I'm in the Mood with John Lee Hooker on his album The Healer. Nick of Time was also the first of many of her recordings to feature her longtime rhythm section of Ricky Fatar and James Hutch Hutchinson, both of whom continue to record and tour with her. Since its release in 1989, Nick of Time has currently sold over 5 million copies in the U.S. alone. Rate followed up this success with three more Grammy Awards for her next album, 1991's Luck of the Draw, which sold 7 million copies in the United States. Three years later, in 1994, she added two more Grammys with her album Longing in Their Hearts, her second number one album, that sold 2 million copies in the U.S. Rate's collaboration with Don was amicably came to an end with 1995's live release Road Tested. Released to solid reviews, it was certified gold in the U.S. Rock Steady was a hit written by Brian Adams and Gretchen Peters in 1995. The song was written as a duet with Brian Adams and Bonnie Raitt for her Road Tested tour, which also became one of her albums. The original demo version of the song appears on Adams' 1996 single Let's Make a Night to Remember. For her next studio album, Raitt hired Mitchell Froome and Chad Blake as her producers. I loved working with Don Was but I wanted to give myself and my fans a stretch and do something different, Raitt stated. Her work with Froome and Blake was released on Fundamental in 1998. Rate performing at the New Orleans Jazz and Heritage Festival, April 23, 2004 and March 2000, Rate was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in Cleveland, Ohio. Silver Lining was released in 2002. In the U.S., it reached number 13 on the Billboard chart and was later certified gold. It contains the singles I Can't Help You Now, Time of Our Lives, and the title track. All three singles charted within the top 40 of the U.S. Adult Contemporary Chart. On March 19, 2002, Bonnie Raitt received a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame for her contributions to the recording industry, located at 1750 North Vine Street. In 2003 Capitol Records released the compilation album The Best of Bonnie Raitt. It contains songs from her prior Capitol albums from 1989 to 2002 including Nick of Time, Luck of the Draw, Longing in Their Hearts, Road Tested, Fundamental, and Silver Lining. Raitt was featured on the album True Love by Toots and the Maytals, which won the Grammy Award in 2004 for Best Reggae Album. Souls Alike was released in September 2005. In the US, it reached the top 20 on the Billboard chart. It contains the singles I Will Not Be Broken and I Don't Want Anything to Change, which both charted in the top 40 of the US Adult Contemporary Chart. In 2006, she released the live DVD-slash-CD Bonnie Raid and Friends, which was filmed as part of the critically acclaimed VH1 classic Decades Rock Live. Concert series, featuring special guests Keb Mo, Alison Krauss, Ben Harper, John Cleary, and Nora Jones. The DVD was released by Capitol Records on August 15. Bonnie Raitt and Friends, which was recorded live in Atlantic City, New Jersey on September 30, 2005, features never-before-seen performance and interview footage, including four duets not included in the VH1 classic broadcast of the concert. The accompanying CD features 11 tracks, including the radio single Two Lights in the Nighttime. In 2007, Rate contributed to Going Home, a tribute to Fats Domino. With John Cleary, she sang a medley of I'm in Love Again and All by Myself by Fats Domino. Rate appeared on the June 7, 2008 broadcast of Garrison Keillor's radio program A Prairie Home Companion. She performed two blues songs with Keb Mo, No Getting Over You and There Ain't Nothing in Ramblin'. Raid also sang Dimming of the Day with Richard Thompson. This show, along with another one with Raid and her band in October 2006, is archived on the Prairie Home Companion website. Raid appeared in the 2011 documentary Reggae Got Soul, the story of Toots and the Maytals, which was featured on the BBC and described as the untold story of one of the most influential artists ever to come out of Jamaica. In February 2012, 
Ray performed a duet with Alicia Keys at the 54th Annual Grammy Awards in 2012 honoring Etta James. In April 2012, Ray released her first studio album since 2005, entitled Slipstream. It charted at number 6 on the US Billboard 200 chart marking her first top 10 album since 1994's Longing in Their Hearts. The album was described as one of the best of her 40-year career by American Songwriter magazine. In September 2012, Rate was featured in a campaign called 30 Songs, 30 Days to Support Half the Sky, Turning Oppression into Opportunity for Women Worldwide. A multi-platform media project inspired by a project outlined in a book by Nicholas Kristoff and Cheryl Wu Dunn. In 2013, she appeared on Foy Vance's album Joy of Nothing. On May 30, 2015, Leon Russell, Bonnie Raitt and Ivan Neville gave a performance at the Canyon Club in Agora Hills, California to raise cash for Marty Greb who was battling cancer. Greb had played on some of their albums. In February 2016, Raitt released her 17th studio album Dig In Deep. The album charted at number 11 on the US Billboard 200 chart and received favorable reviews. The album features the single Gypsy and Me as well as a cover of the In Excess song Need You Tonight. Rate cancelled the first leg of her 2018 spring-summer touring schedule due to a recently discovered medical issue requiring surgical intervention. She reported that a full recovery is expected and that she planned to resume touring with already scheduled dates in June 2018. Rate used alcohol and drugs, but began psychotherapy and joined Alcoholics Anonymous in the late 1980s. I thought I had to live that partying lifestyle in order to be authentic, she said but in fact if you keep it up too long, all you're going to be is sloppy or dead. She became clean in 1987. She has credited Stevie Ray Vaughan for breaking her substance abuse, saying that what gave her the courage to admit her alcohol problem and stop drinking was seeing that Stevie Ray Vaughan was an even better musician when sober. She has also said that she stopped because she realized that the late night life was not working for her. In 1989, she said, I really feel like some angels have been carrying me around. I just have more focus and more discipline, and consequently, more self-respect. Raid has taken sabbaticals, including after the deaths of her parents, brother, and best friend. She has said when I went through a lot of loss, I took a hiatus. Raid and actor Michael O'Keefe were married on April 27, 1991. They announced their divorce on November 9, 1999, with a causal factor appearing to be that their careers caused considerable time apart. Singer and guitarist David Crosby has said that Raid is his favorite singer of all time. Raid with musician Jackson Brown at a 1997 press conference opposing the proposed Yucca Mountain Nuclear Waste Repository Raid's political involvement goes back to the early 1970s. Her 1972 album Give It Up had a dedication to the people of North Vietnam, printed on the back. Raid's website urges fans to learn more about preserving the environment. She was a founding member of Musicians United for Safe Energy in 1979 and a catalyst for the larger anti-nuclear movement, becoming involved with groups like the Abalone Alliance and Alliance for Survival. In 1994 at the urging of Dick Waterman, Raid funded the replacement of a headstone for one of her mentors, blues guitarist Fred McDowell through the Mount Zion Memorial Fund. Raid later financed memorial headstones in Mississippi for musicians Memphis Minnie, Sam Chapman, and Tommy Johnson again with the Mount. Zion Memorial Fund. In 2002, Rate signed on as an official supporter of Little Kids Rock, a non-profit organization that provides free musical instruments and free lessons to children. In public schools throughout the U.S. she has visited children in the program, and sits on the organization's board of directors as an honorary member. At the Stockholm Jazz Festival in July 2004, Rate dedicated a performance of Your Good Thing, from her 1979 album The Glow, to sitting U.S. President George W. Bush. She was quoted as saying we're gonna sing this for George Bush because he's out of here, people. In 2008, Raitt donated a song to the Aid Still Required CD to assist with relief efforts in Southeast Asia from the 2004 tsunami. Raitt worked with Reverb, a non-profit environmental organization, for her 2005 fall-slash-winter and 2006 spring-slash-summer-slash-fall tours. Raitt is part of the No Nukes Group, which opposes the expansion of nuclear power. In 2007, No Nukes recorded a music video of a new version of the Buffalo Springfield song for what it's worth. During the 2008 Democratic primary campaign, Rate, along with Jackson Brown and bassist James Hutch Hutchinson, performed at campaign appearances for candidate John Edwards. During the 2016 Democratic primary campaign, Rate endorsed Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders. 
Rate's principal Turing guitar is a customized Fender Stratocaster that she nicknamed Brownie. This became the basis for a signature model in 1996. Rate was the first female musician to receive a signature Fender line. My Brown Street, the body is a 65 and the neck is from some time after that. It's kind of a hybrid that I got for $120 at 3 o'clock in the morning in 1969. It's the one without the paint, and I've used that for every gig since 1969. Colon not a Grammy Award, but awarded by the Recording Academy. Thanks for watching.